In the last few videos, we talked about the visual measure where we discuss things like the bar charts, the pie charts, the histogram, and the box plot and whiskers. And in this video of ours, we will be discussing the numerical measure. My name is Abefe. I am a YouTuber, a content creator, and a full-time tutor. And welcome to my learning space. <music> So after visualizing our data set or after using the concept of bar chart, histogram, pie chart or box plus and whiskers to actually visually uh, represent our data set. So the next step is for us to numerically analyze our data set. And when, when it comes to numeric analysis and statistics, we are going to be using the basic concept of algebra and other mathematical techniques to actually analyze our data. So there are several ways of numerically analyzing our data set. We have uh, the measure of central tendency also known as the measure of central location which consists of the mean uh, the median and the mood we have the measure of dispersion also known as the measure of spread uh, we have the mean absolute deviation we have the variance we have the standard deviation we also have the fractals i talked about the percentile the deciles and the quartiles and then we also have the principles of the skewness and cortices among other little details that relates to numeric analysis so the essence of this video is to start with the measure of central tendency and by talking about the measure of central tendency we're going to be starting with the mean then next to the median and then next to the mode so let's talk about the mean what is the mean In simple terms, the mean simply means average, that is, uh, the average of all the variables or the average of all the values we have in our data set. Out of the measure of central locations or the measure of central tendency that we have, which is the mean, median, mode, the mean serves as one of the most important details among the three. In fact, it is the one of the most popularly used uh, details when it comes to the measure of central tendency. And uh, it has a lot of properties attached to it, but I am going to be touching uh, the two main important, the two main important properties of the mean, and that is the fact that number one, that the mean can actually act as the center of the data set, and secondly, the mean is very sensitive to an outlier. So let's start with the first details that says that the mean can act as the center of the data set. So let's assume we have a data set of me entering a class and asking uh, a few number of students, let's say like six students in this class, to tell me their age and uh, after asking the students i have the following data sets so i have seven i have ten i have twelve i have twelve i have eight i have eleven so if i'm supposed to get the mean of this variable given to me uh, the formula to use is uh, the sum of all the variables in this data set divided by the size of the data set and that is going to be 60 uh, divided by 6 which gives us 10. So that simply implies that the mean of our data set is actually equals to 10. So if we decide to actually arrange our data set in ascending order and decide to place the value of this mean into our data set, we are going to be having something like 7, 8, 10, uh, 11, 12. We can see that the mean, which is 10, can actually be placed between 10 and 11, which we can see as the center or as the middle point of the data set. Please note that in some cases or most times in all cases in statistics, uh, the mean is usually used to represent the center value which means it can actually replace the median we are going to be talking about the median later in the video but let's focus on the fact that the mean can also serve as the center value in our data set so the second property of the mean is based on the fact that it is very sensitive to outliers so what is an outlier an outlier is that single value in statistics that is extremely large or extremely small when compared to other variables in the data set so let's look at how uh the mean value is actually affected or easily affected by the outliers. So let's go back to the previous example that we used. We collected the age of students in a specific class. So we are still using the same data set of 7, 10, 12, 12, 8, and 11. So let us decide to replace the value of 11 with the number 50. So that means we are going to be having data set of 7, 10, 12, 12, 8, and 50. So if we decide to take the average of this data set, we are going to be having uh, 7 plus 10 plus 12 plus 12 plus 8 plus uh, 11 uh, plus 50 rather, and that is going to give us 99. So 99 divided by 6, we have our answer to be 16.5. So we can see that when we change the value from 11 down to 50, uh, the mean value has actually changed from 10 down to 16.5. This simply implies that the mean is actually very sensitive to outliers, that is, a little change in the value, either when it is extremely low or extremely high, can actually affect the value of the mean in our data set. So that brings us to the question, what are the types of mean we have in statistics? So 
So basically, we have three types of mean in statistics. We have the arithmetic mean, which is the most popular form of mean we know, and we have the geometric mean, and we have the harmonic mean. So for each of these mean, I am going to be uh, talking about how we can get uh, the mean when our data set is from the raw form, or it is actually sorted based on score, or it is sorted it is sorted based on class. Please don't forget that whenever we extract our data set directly from our population or a sample, uh, this form of data is known as a raw data. Take for example the data set we, we just used in the example right now where we talk about the age of students in the school. So the data set 7, 10, 12, 12, 8 and 11 are actually, uh, it's actually a data set in its raw form. So we can have our data set in, in the raw form, we can decide to sort our data set based on score and we can also decide to sort our data set based on class. So I'm going to be talking about how we can get the mean of a data set uh, when it is in a raw form when the data is actually sorted based on class and when the data is sorted based on score but don't forget that i also mentioned that we have three types of mean the arithmetic mean uh, the geometric mean and the harmonic mean so i'm going to be starting with the arithmetic mean so for the arithmetic mean we are going to be getting the value of, of the arithmetic mean when we have a raw data uh, we also get the arithmetic mean when we have uh, our data being sorted based on score and also get the value of the arithmetic mean when our data set is grouped based on class so we are going to be doing all of this for arithmetic mean geometric mean and harmonic mean so that being said let's move into our worksheet let's go there so we have our data set given to us and our question says that find the arithmetic mean of the data set uh, given to us. So we have a 2, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3. So we are supposed to get the arithmetic mean of this data set of ours and taking a look at our data set, our data set in its, in its raw form. So the formula for the arithmetic mean of this data set in the raw form is going to be that our arithmetic, our arithmetic mean rather is going to be summation x divided by n where summation x represents the sum of the individual variables in the data set and n represents the size of the data set so we are talking about her saying uh, we have 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3 uh, divided by so when we count the number of data sets we have we have a total of six of them so 2 plus 2 that gives us 4 4 plus 3 that gives us 7 7 plus 4 that gives us 11 uh, 11 plus uh, 2 that gives us 13 13 plus 3 that gives us 16 so we have 16 divided by 6 so when we use our calculator to work on uh, the value of 16 divided by 6 i have a 16 divided by 6 that gives me a 2.67 approximated to the two decimal place so the arithmetic mean of this data set of ours of this raw data set of ours is actually 2.67 so let's try to get the arithmetic mean of a data set sorted based on score. And here's our data set. The question says that Billy wants to know how much time on average does his colleague in school spend in the library in a week. So he took a random survey by asking students how much time they spend reading and got the following data set. So the data set is at 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, 3, 7, 4, down to 4. And the question was that the timings were measured in hours, so we're supposed to calculate the average time. So by average time, we're talking about the arithmetic, the arithmetic mean right here. So the average time the colleague of Billy spends reading a day. So taking a look at our data sets, this data set of ours is actually given to us in its raw format. That is, it was uh, extracted from a sample and we're supposed to get the mean. So the first step is for us to actually sort our data set. So whenever you see that your data set is actually getting large, it is becoming more than five, six of them. and it's getting to like 10 11 12 or like 20 so it's better to actually sort your data and there are two ways to sort it you can sort it based on score or based on class if you need more details about sorting your data based on score and based on class i am going to be linking a video in the top right corner right here so you can just go check that out so we need to create what we call a frequency table for our data set so let's create a frequency table for our data set so we have to draw a horizontal line so we have this all right so and then we have the vertical line right here so uh, our variable in this case of ours is time so we ask we have x and we have f so we have a two uh, we can see two right here we have three we have four we have five we have six and we have seven so that being said so let's ask ourselves the question how many times does two occurs in a data set so we can see one two uh three so that means two occurred three times in our data set so that means two occurred three times so how many times do three occur in our data set so we can see one two three four five 
so that means uh three occurred five times so that means this is five so four occurred how many times in our data so we can see one we can see two we can see three we can see four we can see five and we can see six so four occurred six times so five occurred how many times so we can see uh one uh, we can see two we can see three so that is three times so six occurred how many times so let's try to scan for six so we can see that six only occurred one time so that is one uh, we have one right here and seven occurred how many times we can see one uh, we can see two so seven occurred two times so the summation of the frequency right here which is our summation f gives us the total number of of data sets that billy extracted so let's do that so three plus five that gives us 8 8 plus 6 that gives us 14 14 plus 3 that gives us 17 17 plus 1 that gives us 18 18 plus 2 that gives us 20 so if we decide to uh, so our summation f rather is 20 so if we decide to count our data set in the raw form we have a uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 we have 20 data sets so, so which simply implies that we are correct so the question so we should get the arithmetic mean of our data set sorted based on score so this is us having a frequency table and sorting our data set based on score or based on the variable that we have so the formula for the arithmetic mean that is am when we have our data set sort in this manner is given as summation f times x divided by the summation f so that means we need to create a space for summation uh, for f times x rather so we come here we create another space like this exactly so we have a uh, excuse me so we have a uh, uh, let's take that off so we have fx so this fx represents the product of the frequency times the individual variable so 2 times 3 that gives us 6 uh, 3 times 5 that gives us 15 uh, 4 times 6 that gives us 24 uh, 5 times 3 that gives us 15 6 times 1 that gives us 6 and 7 times 2 that gives us 14 so that means we have our fx so the next thing is for us to sum fx so that's our summation fx so that's going to be uh, 6 plus 15 plus 24 plus 15 plus 6 plus 14 and that gives us 80 so that means uh, the summation fx is actually equals to 80 and uh, our summation f is equals to 20 so the value of the arithmetic mean am is going to be equals to 80 divided by 20 and that gives us 4 so for our data sets the value of the mean is actually equals to 4 so let's talk about how we can get the mean when our data set is actually sorted based on class or based on group so we have our question right here so it says that you grew 50 baby carrots using special soil uh, you dig them up and uh, you measure their lengths to the nearest millimeter and group the results so this is what we have so this is our data sets given to us right here so we are supposed to get the arithmetic mean or sometimes the mean of our data sets please note that in statistics whenever they mention the word mean uh, we are making reference to arithmetic mean otherwise stated so let's try to extract out our data set very important so uh we have uh, the horizontal line we have that right here okay uh we have one of the lines right here we have this which represents uh, the space for the score uh, let's draw another line because it will be needed so we have another line right here and another line right here will be needed too so let's make it three so our data set right here has been actually grouped based on score so the first step is just for us to extract out the data set so we have x right here which is actually length so we have a 150 to 154 so let's do that 155 to 159 so like i said earlier this is us sorting our data set based on class or based on group so each of the value 150 to 154 155 to 159 160 to 164 are all known as a class so uh so that means uh 150 is actually the lower the lower class limit 154 is the upper the upper class limit 155 is the lower class limit 159 is the upper class limit uh 160 is the lower class limit 164 is the upper class limit still we get to 185 which is the lower class limit of the last class and then 189 is the upper class limit of the last class so when we sort our data sets in this manner the formula for the arithmetic mean which is our am is actually equals to summation f x m 
divided by summation f. Now the value of uh, xm actually represents the middle class. So that means since we are having a class, uh, we can't use the class directly to get, uh, I mean, so we have to get the middle class. And uh, the formula for the middle class xm is equals to a plus b divided by 2. So we take the average of each of the classes. So that means that the lower class plus the upper class divided by 2. So that is going to be uh, 150 plus 154 divided by 2. So 150 plus 154, that's a 304 divided by 2. That gives us uh, 152. So this is a uh, XM which, which represents the middle class. So the next is a uh, 155 plus 159. That's a 314 divided by 2. And that gives us a uh, 157. And we go on to do the rest that way. So we have our XM, we have the middle class for each of the class. So the next step is for us to have FXM. So this is the space for FXM and, and that is the product of the individual frequencies with the individual middle class. So 5 times 152, we have uh, 760. Uh, 2 times 157, we have uh, 314 and we do the rest. So we have our FXM. So the next step is for us to sum everything with the FXM. So we have a 760 plus 314 plus 972 plus 1336 uh, plus 1548 plus uh, 1947 plus 1092. Uh, plus 561 and that gives us so uh, summation fxm right here gives us uh, 8530 so we have our summation fxm to be 8530 let me write this clearly so we need our summation f so that means we have to sum the frequency also so 5 plus 2 plus 6 plus 8 plus 9 plus 11 plus 6 plus 3 and that gives us 50 so the value of the arithmetic mean is going to be close to 8530 divided by 50 and uh, when we do the math uh, 8530 divided by 50 and that is equals to 170.6 millimeter so the average uh, height of this baby carrot that we agree with special soil is going to be 170.6 millimeter so this is the value of the arithmetic mean if you enjoyed this class and you learned something new from this video, I would really appreciate if you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a like and also turn up your notifications so that you can get uh, uh, you can get notified or get an alert when I release new video. I release videos at least almost every day of the week, so I would really appreciate if you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for staying to the end of this video and we meet in the next one. Bye for now.